IK Booster contains within it a way to apply dynamic, calculated motions that can interact with environments and allow the user to animate things that would normally take a long time to do by hand. That description, however, doesn't really communicate a whole lot because bullet, cloth effects, hard effects, etc. also do this. So where does IK Booster Dynamics fit into the picture? While the realm of dynamics is really a topic of its own and isn't something that I can comprehensively cover in this video series, this should provide at least enough information to get you started. Let us construct some very basic objects to perform some test simulations, and I'll explain where IK Booster Dynamics is best used. For your reference, IK Booster Dynamics uses the same engine as that of cloth and hard effects, so if you're familiar with those systems, some elements of IK Booster Dynamics, such as the names of various properties and settings, will be familiar to you. Start by creating a null and giving it about 10 bones. Move it up a little bit and apply IK Booster to the null. Go into the IKB menu and check Bone Dynamics. Remember, these check marks work on a per object basis, so if you want to isolate what IK Booster hierarchies are affected by dynamics, you must do it through here. Now, create a Collision Dynamics object. This is located in the Items tab. Scale it and position it somewhere underneath the bone chain like so. Here, I'm purposely making it so that the bone chain will slide off the side of the sphere. By default, in the Modify tab, there is a button called IKB Calculate. If you intend to use this function frequently, I recommend making it a hotkey. This command will calculate dynamics and place keyframes into the timeline for IK Booster Dynamics enabled items that lie within your current keyframe range. Press the button and watch what happens. Most likely, the bone chain will move very sluggishly. This is because, unfortunately, the default gravity for IK Booster Dynamics is set to negative 1 meter. Go into the IKB menu options and set the gravity to negative 10. After pressing IKB Calculate again, we get some visible results, but they look quite bad and are practically unusable. This is because the very top of the bone chain is twisting in ways that trigger snapping and flipping. In order to fix this, the topmost bone in the chain must be set to quaternion. Now the simulation runs mostly as expected. Note that wind and gravity dynamics objects also work with IK Booster Dynamics. Something worth mentioning is that IK Booster Dynamics works with the fix command. If I fix something in this chain and then run a simulation, it gets held in place at that point. On a related note, remember that you can have dynamics objects stick to collision objects upon impact by enabling Fix by Collision in the IK Booster Options dialog. Another important thing to be aware of is that set goal also operates in tandem with dynamics. So if we wanted to have someone's hand grab this chain, it is effortless to set up. Another idea is to utilize multiple chains of bones and then use a set of nulls like these to control all of them at the same time. Kind of like a marionette setup. Mixing in hand keyed motions with IK Booster Dynamics is very easy. I'll set the top of the chain to IK Stop, animate the chain for a few frames, and let's say that I want to let Dynamics take care of the chain's movement from this last frame onward. Set the keyframe range appropriately, calculate, and at the end of the baked range we can easily revert to hand keying. With initial demonstrations covered, it is important to keep in mind what IK Booster Dynamics should and should not be used for, as Bullet Dynamics can perform many simulated functions better, faster, and more interactively than Lightwave's other Dynamics systems. If you're animating things like the folding of a character's clothing, or draping of a large number of wires across a surface, or anything that you would normally not apply at least some hand-keyed elements to, then the task is better left to bullet rather than IK Booster Dynamics. 
In other words, leave IK Booster Dynamics to handle situations that demand the highest levels of control and can work with all object types, including bones, lights, and cameras, or for when you need to simulate motions in a way that takes into account their child-parent hierarchy relationships, which is something Bullet does not do as of Lightwave 11.6. Okay, time to finally explore the Dynamics Edit function. It works similarly to controller edit, where the interface doesn't change, but now all the controls and right-click menus revolve around editing the dynamics properties of the currently selected IK Booster hierarchy. Everything in this right-click menu gets applied to the IK Booster object relative to the keyframe mode setting. Weight determines how difficult it should be to get things to stop once they start moving. For resistance, think of it like how thick the air is. Higher values will uniformly dampen dynamics movement. Using parent or child keyframe modes and adjusting the values gradually down the chain is a good way to control the arc of the dynamics motions. Spring only applies to the dynamics effect function in the right-click timeline menu, which I'll cover later. Viscosity determines the amount of shape retention. Higher values will hold the shape more, and it can also be used to help add or reduce friction when interacting with collision objects. Size is straightforward, allowing you to modify how large the collision areas of IK Booster items are. Something to note here is that with bones, the collision points expand from the base ends of them. So if you have a really long bone or end up with a gap between two points, know that you can simply add a null object in between to fill that collision gap. On-Off allows you to turn dynamics on or off for specific items in the IK Booster hierarchy. A common thing to do is to be in all mode toggle everything off, and then toggle on dynamics as needed using the keyframe mode settings. Something that may be helpful to know is that if you are in current mode, you can hold down the control key, select multiple bones or objects, and toggle the selected items on or off. Now, if you have your controller size set to zero in the IKB menu options dialog, Know that items that are on in Dynamics will show an orange circle when you select it. Alternatively, you can increase the controller size while editing Dynamics so that you can see whether items are enabled or disabled a bit easier. I have some miscellaneous tips before we wrap up the main elements of IK Booster Dynamics. With Dynamics in general, it is beneficial to run the actual simulations at a higher frames per second than what you usually animate at. Let me show you a common issue that people run into, and this applies to other dynamic systems as well. Say I have this bone chain and several moving collision objects, and I want to calculate this while my frames per second is set to 15. When I run the simulation, the chain goes crazy and the calculation time skyrockets. This is happening because there isn't enough time between the frames for the computer to make an accurate calculation on how these items should move. In general, it is best to simulate IK Booster Dynamics with your frames per second set somewhere between 40 and 120. This will not only increase the accuracy of the simulation, but it also greatly speeds up the calculations. How high or how low you need to set this strongly depends on how fast your object is moving and how much force is being applied when a collision is detected. After finishing with dynamic simulations, you can then revert your production back to its normal frames per second. Something else to be aware of is that the scale of your object will impact the results you get from simulations. I'll use a bone chain to demonstrate this with a gravity setting of negative 10 meters. If I run the simulation, it operates as expected, but if I scale up the object to 10 times its original size, look what happens. The object has lost a lot of its swing. 
If we go into IK Booster's options and increase the gravity to 10 times the amount of the original, then run the simulation, notice how the simulation once again plays like it did before scaling. If you're using large scaled models, know that the settings you use for IK Booster Dynamics, especially gravity, will need to be adjusted to compensate for that additional scale. All right, there is one final thing to cover and that's Dynamics Effect, found in the multi-key right-click menu. Consider this a quick and dirty way to animate semi-rigid things like antennas or tail movement for creatures. Ideally, this should be utilized when you want to apply dynamics to something that needs to eventually return to its original orientation, which is something that normal IK Booster Dynamics doesn't do. The proper usage for this tool isn't documented, so allow me to explain. First off, the selection you make is important, and I recommend being in current keyframe mode when using the dynamics effect function. To get proper operation of Dynamics Effect, you must hold down the control key and select two or more points in the bone chain from base to tip. Then make a keyframe range selection to bring up the dialog. In this window, low values between 10 and 40 are likely the most common ones to use for weight and resistance regardless of scale, paired with a low spring value between 1 and 10. The visual representation you see here doesn't really say much, but know it represents one second intervals between these black lines. Hit OK, and now the bone chain will take into account your selection and the movement of parent objects when determining its swing. If you don't like the result, simply undo and rerun the command with different settings. The Dynamics Effect function does interact with collision objects, but it will only factor in bones that you selected. That should get you started with IK Booster Dynamics. Again, the most important thing is knowing where and when to use it. Use it to animate ropes or chains that characters interact with. Use it to quickly animate curtains or drape objects over things or move multi-branched plants on the ocean floor. Anything that requires the Dynamics object to be connected to something, or demands the ability to hand key any part of any item at any time, is best solved with IK Booster Dynamics. I hope this series has opened up quite a few doors for you that allow for much greater possibilities when it comes to animating in Lightwave. Many of the workflows and techniques that I've covered here were specifically designed to solve and remedy the problems that I myself ran into while producing my own content. With all that said and done, this is Ryan Roy signing off. Thank you for visiting Liberty3D.com to obtain this comprehensive guide to IK Booster.